Hello, this is my tutorial on how to make my demake of Skyrim with combat and movement and room creation, which I'll be explaining throughout this video. The first thing I'll be covering is how to make the sprite in Game Maker Studio 2, which is what we're using to create the game. First, you have to go here, right click, and click Create Sprite, which is basically just the way it looks when it's on the screen in the room. And to be able to edit it, you have to double click here and it opens up the sprite creation screen. We have different colors here and different tools here and you just play around with it until you get something which you want. And if you're just doing it as a prototype, just a cube would be fine. And once you've done that, you just have to simply double click here and you're back here. And an important thing to do is also turn on collisions and make sure the mapping is correct. Here I've got it so it's set around exactly where the pixels are, but you can set it so it's just a rough rectangle or square, which helps with frames per second, because this is taking up a lot more RAM. But because it's a fairly simple sprite and quite a lot of my stuff is fairly simple, you don't really need to bother with that kind of thing. The next thing I'll be going over is how to do objects, with it being rather similar to the sprite, where you simply right click here and click create object. And then once you're in that screen, this will pop up and all you simply do is click here and select the sprite that you want to use. For example, here I've got the hero character. And this allows you to add events and the actual code that allows it to run to be able to make it work the way you want it to. With the different events having two different types. One that checks every frame per second and anything happens within that is then checked and run through. Whereas the other type is checking if something has been pressed or done as in the collisions which we set up earlier with the collision markers on the sprites or a key press with WASD which we have here for the movement. Here I have all the collision boxes for all the sprites that I've used to create all the runes, which are simple just markers that when collided it will make the sprite that has collided with it to set anything to zero. And as long as you click relative here it will work fine, otherwise it will just warp them to those coordinates instead of just setting their movement to zero, 0, because this allows it so it just stops them from going past that point. And because all the sprites I've used for that kind of thing are square, it makes it a lot more simple to actually do. But if you have more complicated stuff, your mileage may vary. I will now be covering the movement for the main character, with all the events set up here with A, D, S and W which means that it will check if these buttons have been pressed and when these buttons have been pressed it will run the code inside the events. Here is the code which we currently have in the movement for the character with it looking fairly simple with all it's simply doing is taking negative 5 away from the current location of the sprite because of the relative bit here. If this was not ticked, it would just jump straight to negative 5 on the map. Instead, it is taking this away from their location, which allows them to move like a normal character. The movement for the enemy sprites are a lot different and a little bit more complicated, with you needing to have a few more events for them. Such as here with the create event, you need to actually set a speed for them because the player is not directly controlling them. With the speed here for the dragon set to 0.5 because it is a slow moving creature because it has a HP value of 9 with the variables here set though which are set to those. And variables are just words that equal whole numbers or in that case a point number. The next point of interest for the movement for the enemies is right here where here it is checking where the object hero is, which is our main character, and then it is using that to determine its location and set that point to where they need to go. And because it is in steps here, it's checking this every frame per second, so this is constantly updating. And then here we're using that 
speed value which we have in the value here to then set how fast it is going towards this point which essentially just creates this single-minded AI that is just going out for the kill. The next thing I'll be covering is the combat systems I've got in place for the game, which is a little bit more complicated but still rather straightforward. With here, it is just checking if we've made contact with any of the enemies, which currently we have two types. And all it simply is doing right now is with the skeleton, aka enemy 1, resetting the room, which just sets everything back to default and is a bit like a very basic respawn mechanic. And here, if you're going up against the dragon, it goes to this room, which is the beginning room, which is essentially restarting the whole game from the beginning, so you, it has more higher stakes when you're fighting this enemy, which is at the very end of the game currently. The next thing I'll be going over is the combat systems for the main character, which is a lot more complex because you are shooting arrows. With here, it is creating a cooldown variable which we'll be using later, which is currently set to zero. And here is where it all begins. With here, checking if it does a button click, and if so, it will then check the cooldown, and if the value is zero, or less than zero or equal to zero, which we specified here, it will then run the code. If not, it will just stop until it reaches zero. And then it will then spawn the arrow at the player's coordinates, which is then set here. And then it adds this amount of time to the cooldown, which is, this is the amount of frames it takes, not the amount of seconds. And then here it is just simply taking one away from the cooldown every frame, which gives us a very quick cooldown and is a little bit like a slow firing minigun. The rest of the code for the combat for the main character is in actually the object for the arrow here, with this setting where the mouse cursor has been pressed and setting it here. And then this is setting the direction, so instead of having horizontal arrows just flying at an angle, where it would just basically be the wood bit just slapping them in the face, it will then direct the arrow point, because of the way we set out the arrow in the main sprite area, it will then target it so it looks more realistic. And here it is setting the speed for it, so it actually moves forward instead of just spawning and staying in place. And here is a very important part, is that when it collides with any other objects that it destroys itself otherwise every frame it is in contact with something it will do that amount of damage each frame which basically creates an insta kill as well as allowing it to go through walls and other enemies basically making the player character just too overpowered the next thing i'll be going over is how to make the doors which allow you to go in between rooms with a quick drop back to the sprites, I have made a small animation for the doors, which just makes it look a little bit more interesting and just a little bit nicer to look at. With the actual code for it being rather simple, it is just basically making it so the game goes to the next room. With the only difference here being these ones, which is going to the previous room, and then the final one, which just ends the game which is the only other things you'll need other than the walls and other objects that can't be walked through with the floor sprites just being completely empty because you don't want them to do anything with a very important part of it making sure that everything that you want showing is above in the area here otherwise the floor will be covering the sprites above which is not what you want to happen at all. The next and last thing I'll be covering is how to make rooms. With it being fairly simple because we've done it before with the objects and sprites, just instead it is create room. And all you simply do is drag the objects into said room after maybe editing where the width and height of the room. And then this allows you to just drag stuff in 
and it creates almost like a sandbox-esque kind of like game making mechanic which could probably be a game of its own with it just simply dragging the sprites in and making it look the way you want and then as soon as you want the next room you just click, simply click create room and it will just keep adding the numbers which is fairly simple with the rooms themselves just being basically where all the code interacts and where everything happens where all the gameplay happens and essentially the end product is. I will now show you how the game actually runs so you can actually see what all this code ends up doing. Here we go. It's a little bit clunky still but as a proof of concept it works with the next room working here and then the next room. And that's how you make the D-Maker of Skyrim in Game Maker Studio 2. Thank you for watching.